Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. We are now in lecture 6, Transaction Management Part 5. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to describe the locking, shared and exclusive lock, 2PL shrinking and growing phase, concurrency problem solution by using 2PL, and cascading rollback. Serializability can be achieved in several ways. There are two main concurrency control techniques that allow transactions to execute safely in parallel, subject to certain constraints, locking, and timestamp methods. Locking and timestamping are essentially conservative, which cause transactions to be delayed in case they conflict with other transactions at some time in the future. However, there is optimistic method which assume conflict is rare and only check for conflicts at commit. Locking methods are the most widely used approach to ensure serializability of concurrent transaction. It is a procedure used to control concurrent access to data. When one transaction is accessing the database, a lock may deny access to other transactions to prevent incorrect results. Means. The other transaction has to wait for the data item to be used. There are two types of lock. The first one is shared lock. Shared lock means read lock. You can read but not update the item. The second one is exclusive lock. This is what we call as write lock. It can both read and update item. Some systems allow transaction to upgrade read lock to an exclusive lock or downgrade exclusive lock to a shared lock. Let's take a look at locking method. We have two different transactions here, transaction 1 and 2. Both transactions want to use data item X. Transaction 1 starts first and use write lock to data item X. Means data item X now is exclusive to transaction 1. Then transaction 2 starts and trying to lock data item X too. But data item X is not available as it has been locked by first transaction means transaction 2 now needs to wait until transaction 1 unlock the data item. Once the data item is unlocked and available, then transaction 2 can lock data item X. If another transaction wants to use data item X2, they have to wait up until transaction 2 unlock the data item X. Even though locking method can prevent some concurrency problems, however, sometimes this locking method has its own weakness. Let's take a look at this example. Both transactions trying to display value X and Y. The transactions are done concurrently since transaction 9 haven't finished, but transaction 10 can start. At the end of transaction 10, it displayed X equals to 150 and Y equals to 200. But at the end of transaction 9, the transaction 9 shows x equals to 150 and y equals to 250. We have the same data items, but why does it have different values? This is because transaction 9 released lock too soon. What does it mean here? Using this locking method, you can lock another data item after unlocking the previous data item. If you keep lock unlock lock unlock the data item, this could lead to non-serializable schedule. Hence, it defeats the purpose to achieve serializability in transactions. Hence, a modified locking method should be used, which we call as two-phase locking. To avoid the problem of previous locking method, in two-phase locking or which we call as 2PL, there are two different phases being introduced. The first one is growing phase, means you can acquire locks but cannot release any locks. In a transaction, let's say you want to use five data items, you need to make sure all five have been locked before you can start unlocking any data items that you want. Since the number of lock is keep increasing here, hence that's why it is named as growing phase. The second phase is a shrinking method. Once you start unlock the data item, you cannot lock any data item anymore. Hence, the number of lock is keep decreasing until you have no lock on data item and finish your transaction. We have the same situation where transaction 9 and transaction 10 want to display value X and Y. 
Once started, since transaction 9 knows that data item X and Y are needed by each transaction, transaction 9 can lock both data items at the same time as long as it is available. If your transaction wants to lock data item one by one like transaction 10, it is also allowed in the system. Since transaction 9 has both X and Y, other transactions that want to use the same data item have to wait until transaction 9 releases the locks. As I said, transaction can unlock all the data items that it has at the same time, or the transaction can unlock it one by one. But remember, once the transaction starts unlock, it cannot lock anymore. If the transaction wants to use another data item, new transaction must be made. Based on this 2PL method, both transactions displayed the consistent value of X and Y, which is 150 and 250. Remember the concurrency problems in part 2? This 2PL can tackle the problem. For loss update problem, Transaction 1 now has to wait until Transaction 2 releases the lock before it can continue with its operation. Now, the balance is correct. For uncommitted dependency problem, Transaction 3 has to wait for Transaction 4 to finish its transaction first. To finish transaction, it's either you need to commit or roll back. If you take a look here, T3 read the correct balance X once T4 is rolled back. For inconsistent analysis problem, even though T6 started first, but it issued a read lock while T5 issuing a write lock. Write lock has priority than read lock. Hence, T6 needs to wait until T5 releases all its lock before T6 can start the summation of X, Y and Z. In the end, the result is correct and consistent. Let's move on to cascading rollback. If we take a look here, once T14 unlocking the data, T15 use the data updated by T14. Same goes to T16, it reads the data item updated by T15. But if T14 roll back, since T15 is dependent on T14, T15 must also be roll back. Same goes to T16, it is dependent on T15. Then it too must be roll back. That's cascading rollback. So I guess that's all for now. Stay safe, stay home. See you again in the next part. Thank you.